Welcome back to Drinks Made Easy, because cocktails don't have to be difficult. Today we're taking a look at the martini, and we're comparing the classic martini to some of the modern or restaurant style martinis, and whether people who order that even really want a martini at all, or if they know what they're ordering in the first place. This is really lovely. Mm-hmm. Ooh. You don't know them. Good evening. Could I get you started with some cocktails? Yes, I'll have a uh, classic gin martini served up with a twist and plenty of vermouth. That's not a real martini. I'll have a modern martini with an obnoxious amount of vodka, no vermouth whatsoever, shaken until it is ice cold. I want crystals on the top and extra blue cheese stuffed olives. And what Please. is that again? It's a modern martini. Oh, modern something. I don't know if it's a martini. Okay. First, we're going to start with the classic martini, and we're defining that as the martinis from the 19 teens to the 1920s. Now, there are some recipes that call for the martini in the late 1800s that are equal parts and have some bitters and other ingredients in that, but that's really before the martini was popularized, so we're just going to forget about that for the moment. So, we'll start with two ounces of gin and three quarters of an ounce of dry vermouth. Now, if you were doing vodka, which wasn't as popular, but is still acceptable, you'd be doing a little bit more vodka and dialing back on the vermouth because you don't have the strong botanicals in the vodka and you need more vodka because gin is generally gonna be a higher proof. Make sense? Give that a stir and then straw it, of course, to test for dilution. Yeah. And once that's chilled, we're gonna pour that into the martini glass or Nick and Nora glass if you have them, which basically looks like a modified between a coupe and a martini glass. But honestly, in a pinch, any glass that will hold your liquid will do. And then we're gonna garnish this with an expressed peel of lemon one of the three classic garnishes for a classic martini. Those three being an express peel of lemon, an olive, or a pickled onion. Anything else, you start introducing some really strong flavors that upend what is designed to be a pretty delicate, nuanced cocktail. It's light and subtle and delicate. If you like cocktails that have big citrus or uh, other flavors that are just overriding, just go for another one. If you're feeling like something light and delicate, try a classic martini. And now for the modern martini. I'm not even gonna waste time showing you how to make it because all it is is shaken chilled vodka, two and a half ounces, poured into a glass with whatever garnish they happen to throw in there. Now, if you at least rinse the glass with vermouth, technically it is a martini at that point. But this, which I see all too often, is just chilled spirit up in a nice glass. You can put water in a beer stein, it doesn't make it beer. Make sense? Just to recap, the fundamental aspect that makes a martini a martini is the play between either vodka and gin and vermouth. You can use dry vermouth, you can use a combination of sweet and dry vermouth, but it's really about this interplay between these two spirits. Anytime you start introducing citrus or sweetener, you start moving into other types of cocktails. If you have any questions, please go ahead and leave a comment below and we'll be sure to get back to you. Cheers from Drinks Made Easy. Mm. That's good, huh? Much better than the other crap that you were gonna order. It's all right. Nice shirt. Nice face. What'd you say? I love you. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs>